misunderstood question, does the Bible support slavery? And so what I want to do is I want to question that occurs within any group of people. And for black people in America, I am aghast at the level of brainwashing that we continue to uh, promote in order for us to believe in this religion so that we don't go to hell for the fear of hell. Uh, the question of slavery is not misunderstood in the Bible. The question of slavery is walked around, mistaught, been given, you know, a little treatment in order to swerve the people. In his seven reasons talking about slavery, he mainly focused on the Bible's concept of indentured servitude, where this was something that was from one Israelite to another Israelite. He fails to talk about the fact that the Bible in Leviticus, I believe 25, states very clearly that of foreign of foreigners and foreigners that live amongst you, you can take them as slave as slaves and keep them for in perpetuity and pass them down as sins to your sons. This would indicate that the Bible have chat is is granting chattel slavery. Now he uses the excuse and said God is not approved of these laws because God would not approve of slavery, but yet knowing the evilness and the and thoughts of men, God decided that he was going to make rules and regulations for these people. We're talking about the same God that when he saw that the people were evil, he brought in a flood. We're talking about the same God that when he said Ur was wicked, he killed him. When his brother then wouldn't his sister-in-law he killed him too the same god that killed the firstborn of the egyptians in plague and brought forth plagues and turned the water into blood this same god who does whatever it is needed in to move the people in order to get rid of people this same god cannot come and say hey how about y'all have these at all but that as a rule the same god that you know can tell them don't wear mixed linen he can say, don't do that. The same one that tells you is not to worship any other gods, honor your mother and your father. Um, this same God that tells you to come and provide this sacrifice of atonement and the sacrifice of fellowship, who can give you instructions for the atonement of your sins, who can give instructions for feast days, who can give instructions for um, adultery and uh, what you should wear and, and tell you not to participate in witchcraft not to participate in omens, not to participate in fortune tellers, who can tell you all these other things that you're not supposed to do, but yet he cannot tell you not to have slaves. He can't tell you not to have slaves. He, does. he tells you what type of slaves you can have into perpetuity. He goes as far as to say that if a man is made a slave in the servitude of your own people, but yet you, the master gives him a wife and they have children, that the wife and the children are still remain as slaves to the master. But if the husband would want to be with his wife and children, then take him to the temple, put him up against a post, pierce his ear, and then he gives a vow of slavery in perpetuity to the master so he can be with his family. That is the only way you can keep one of your own kind as a perpetual slave. This God can give you and tell you all these things, but yet, because you want to worship this book so much and you want to make the transatlantic slave trade different than what the Bible speaks about slavery, the same Bible that Hebrew Israelites use, Deuteronomy 28, 6, is it 23, 68 or 20, 23, 68 or 28, 63. The same one that they use to justify the transatlantic slavery, that this God, either way you look at it, in this book, this book is saying, current version, is saying that the children of Israel would be so disobedient that he would send them back to Egypt in slavery for 400 years. I don't agree with that translation. That is not the right translation, but that is what they go by, and this is what's in your book currently. But it is said in this book that they, he will put them in slavery for 400 years for their disobedience. This deity uses slavery at his own convenience whenever it works for them, and it is part of your book. Just accept it. If you're going to worship this book, just accept what it says. Quit trying to do your workarounds. And for a black man who is now concerned that people are calling him a false teacher, but for a black man whose family has been in America, 
wake up, brother. Wake up. This is what Marcus Garvey talked about when he said that Africa needs to wake up. They need to become woke. I understand that they've messed up the term woke now. But Marcus Garvey, when he first talked about that, it was about waking up from the oppression, waking up from the religion, waking up from, waking up from the systematic racism, waking up from the low self-esteem that European, Europeans and the world has put on people of color. So wake up, Alan Parr. You are a false teacher because you're teaching a religion that is false in every way. It is a religion that was made for a certain group of people based on the propaganda that they wanted to have to create their own self-esteem after the Babylonian captivity. Wake up, brother. Please wake up. And remember that you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.